Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco on the historic victory achieved by the Moroccan national team over the Spanish national team and its qualification to the quarterfinals of the World Cup 2022, which is the first time for an Arab team. His Majesty praised the distinguished and strong technical performance of the Moroccan national team, which enabled them to reach the quarterfinals. His Majesty wished the team success in the upcoming matches to honor their country and the global sporting event. Event. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco, marking the historic victory of the Moroccan national team and its qualification as the first Arab team to the quarterfinals of the 2022 World Cup. His Royal Highness expressed his sincere congratulations to His Majesty the King of Morocco on this outstanding historic sporting achievement, lauding the distinguished and strong performance of the Moroccan national team players who deserved this qualification and victory. His Royal Highness also expressed his sincere wishes to the team members for further success in the upcoming matches. His Royal Highness also sent two similar cables of congratulations to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince of Morocco, Prince Mawlai Al Hassan, and to the Prime Minister of Morocco, Aziz Akhnouch. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister and Chairman of the Economic Development Board, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 2 of 2022 on restructuring the Board of Directors of the Bahrain Development Bank. According to the edict, the Board of Directors of the Bahrain Development Bank shall be chaired by Ghassan Ghalib Abdel Al and comprise the following members. Amna Ali Al Arayyad, Hani Hussain Rida, Aisha Mohammed Abdel Malik, Sandeep Bose, Yusuf Mohammed Nafai, Manal Shawqi Al Bayat, and Marwa Khalid Saad. The new board will serve for a three-year term, starting from the date of the issuance of this edict. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 63 of 2022, restructuring the board of directors of Iskan Bank, based on the proposal of the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning following the approval of the cabinet. According to the edict, the board of directors of Iskan Bank shall be chaired by the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning and comprise the following members. Mohammed Abdul Rahman Bouchiri, Reem Abdul Ghaffar Al Alawi, Isa Abdullah Zainal, Nabil Saleh Abdul Al, Najla Muhammad Shirawi, Mbarak Nabil Mutar, Abdul Latif Khalid Abdul Latif, and Belsam Ali Salman. Members of the Board of Directors of Iskan Bank shall serve for a renewable three year term. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Oil and Gas Holding Company, Noga Holding, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, presided over the Board of Directors meeting. His Highness praised the ongoing efforts of the company in advancing the Kingdom's energy sector in line with the vision of His Majesty the King and the aspirations of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. His Highness lauded the effective role of Board of Directors plays in adopting and leading corporate governance practices in line with international standards. His Highness was presented with the Executive Management Report, which highlighted the company's latest developments and its transformation journey. The Board of Directors addressed the progress achieved on several strategic projects, including the Babco Modernization Program, while stressing the importance of the significant investment in serving the Kingdom's and region's refining industry. The meeting shed light on the progress made with the Boston Consulting Group and the company's efforts in developing the National Energy Strategy and Noga Holding Transformation Strategy, in addition to creating an effective operation model for the company. The meeting also discussed the scope of Noga Holdings strategic financial advisor Lazard and ch in charge of the financial risk management and financing future projects for the coming years. His Highness stressed the importance of developing new tools and adopting innovative work metho methodologies to manage financial risks to ensure Noga Holding maintains financial strength despite a changing global financial market. His Highness also discussed economic, social and corporate governance aspects, praising the efforts made by the Noga Holding Group to implement and adopt the pillars of sustainability. The company's board of directors approved Noga Holdings budget plan for the upcoming year and outlined steps to realize the company's ambitions to move towards a future based on sustainable energy and meet Bahrain's net zero aspirations. His Highness Sheikh Nasser lauded the progress made by Noga Holding to advance the kingdom's oil and gas sector and the significant role played by the company and its subsidiaries to further develop this vital sector in line with the kingdom's economic vision 2030 and the Bahrain economic recovery plan.
Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Ironman Middle East Championship 70.3 kicks off, which is held in Bahrain. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, directed the organizing committee to provide the optimal environment for all participants in the championship to achieve success for the world event. His Highness Sheikh Nasser wished all the participants success. The organizing committee held a press conference to reveal all the details of the championship and it expressed pleasure with the resumption of the championship after two years. The committee revealed that a group of athletes from over 80 countries will be participating and noted that there are over 1,200 athletes on the list of participants. The committee added that the championship is the best opportunity to promote Bahrain's touristic gains. A number of participants from Bahrain's victorious team and previous champions also spoke at the conference. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa attended a ceremony hosted by the UAE Embassy in Bahrain, marking the 51st UAE National Day. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah hailed the long-standing fraternal relations binding Bahrain and the UAE, led by His Majesty the King and the UAE President. Upon arrival, the Deputy Prime Minister was welcomed by UAE Ambassador to Bahrain, Sheikh Sultan bin Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan. He paid homage to the late His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan and other early founders for their role in laying the foundations of strong strategic relations binding the two countries. Sheikh Khalid conveyed the government's thanks and gratitude, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to the UAE for supporting Bahrain and its people. He congratulated the UAE leadership, government and people on the occasion, hailing their development, progress and prosperity strides and the strong partnership between the two countries. The UAE Ambassador to Bahrain expressed thanks to the Deputy Prime Minister for attending the ceremony and hailed the strong historic relations between the two brotherly countries. He noted the joint keenness on expanding bilateral relations and fostering the values of tolerance and peaceful coexistence, security and stability, and for the sake of sustainable development in the region and the world. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, participated in the 154th GCC Ministerial Council meeting held in the GCC General Secretariat in Riyadh to prepare for the 43rd session of the GCC Supreme Council of GCC Leaders, which is scheduled to be held on December 9th, chaired by the custodian of the two holy mosques. The GCC Foreign Affairs Ministers held their meeting, chaired by the Omani Foreign Affairs Minister, Sayyid Badr bin Hamad bin Hamoud al Busaidi, with the participation of GCC Secretary General Dr. Nayef al Hajraf. They discussed the topics listed on the agenda which included draft laws, topics and reports prepared by specialized ministerial committees and reports of the General Secretariat on issues related to the GCC cooperation march. The ministers also discussed the ongoing preparations for the Gulf Chinese Summit in Riyadh on December 9th between GCC leaders and the Chinese President and the topics which will be discussed within the framework of enhancing cooperation and strategic partnership between both sides. They reviewed coordinating GCC country stances and international events and exchanging support in nominations related to positions and memberships of regional and international organizations and bodies, in addition to Arab, regional and international developments and challenges and ways to enhance Gulf cooperation in defending the interests of member states and protecting security and stability in the region. Under the patronage of the Commander of the Royal Medical Services, Major General Professor Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince Center for Training and Medical Research organized the first Bahrain International Wounds Conference in the presence of the President of the Supreme Council for Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Health, Dr. Jalil Hassan. The Chairman of the Conference's Organizing Committee, Colonel Dr. Nayef Lori, expressed appreciation to the SCH President for supporting national medical cadres in developing the health sector in the kingdom. He also expressed thanks to the Minister of Health for her efforts in developing the health system in the Kingdom and to the Commander of the Royal Medical Services for patronizing the conference, as well as the keenness to harness the capabilities of the Royal Medical Services in the field of vocational training for health care providers. He stressed the importance of strengthening the pioneering steps taken by Bahrain and the Royal Medical Services in continuing to develop the health sector. 
The Minister of Labor and Social Development and LMRA Board of Directors Chairman Jamil Ahmedan participated in the 17th Asia and the Pacific Regional Meeting of the International Labor Organization. The Minister affirmed Bahrain's efforts to strengthen cooperation with ILO to spread social justice and promote fundamental work rights. Ahmedan highlighted Bahrain's economic recovery plan which aims to stimulate the national economy, develop the labor market, develop promising sectors and attract more job generating investments. He said that the success of the, that plan was in raising the employment rates of citizens, reducing the unemployment rate, and achieving more stability and growth in the labor market. The minister reviewed Bahrain's efforts to overcome the repercussions of COVID-19 by launching initiatives with humanitarian health and economic dimensions, at the forefront of which is the provision of a financial and social support packages for private sector establishments to address the economic effects of the pandemic. The Bahraini ambassador to the United Kingdom, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa and his wife, held a reception ceremony on the occasion of Bahrain Women's Day. The ambassador honored Bahraini women working in the UK in the medical and engineering fields and PhD researchers in the field of immunology, oncology and economic development in appreciation of their efforts in supporting the comprehensive development process of the Kingdom of Bahrain and their honorable representation of the country abroad. The participants expressed thanks and appreciation to Sheikh Fawaz and affirmed their keenness to further enhance the march of progress of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The CEO of Ilamari, Nof Jamshir, met with officials and representatives from the Human Trafficking Prosecution Unit of the U.S. Department of Justice, the Wage and Hour Division of the U.S. Department of Labor, and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Jamshir stressed Bahrain's commitment to safeguarding labor rights and promoting a safe and just working environment. She affirmed the Kingdom's dedication to promoting strategic partnerships with the international community to combat trafficking in persons. The CEO highlighted a range of programs and initiatives launched by the Kingdom to safeguard worker rights. These include the legislative tools that saw the implementation of the wage protection system and the establishment of the expat protection center. Jamshir noted that the kingdom also intensified efforts to develop community awareness of rights and obligations through the LMRA's regional center of excellence and capacity building for combating trafficking in persons in partnership with the international organizations. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Interior, Sheikh Nasser bin Abdul Rahman Al Khalifa, witnessed a seminar held by the General Directorate of Verdicts, Implementation and Alternative Penalties on the occasion of Human Rights Day. The seminar was titled Community First and was attended by the heads of associ associations related to human rights and civil society institutions. The General Director for the Implementation of Alternative Sentences and Penalties, Sheikh Khalid bin Rashid Al Khalifa, noted Bahrain's continuation of its modernization and development march launched by His Majesty the King through his reform project. He added that the implementation of His Majesty's directives was clearly evident through the development of the reform system in Bahrain in light of the comprehensive development of the criminal justice system. He noted that the Ministry of Interior as a result of the directives of the minister was keen on adopting the best world standards for reform justice. Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, headed by Samir Nas, participated in the International Labour Organization's 17th Asia and the Pacific Regional Meeting, which includes the three production parties, namely the government, employers and workers, which is currently being held in Singapore. The meeting discussed integrated policies to create a human-centered recovery that is inclusive, sustainable and resilient. Nas highlighted the importance of expatriate workers in the GCC countries as an essential component of national experiences in the modern era, especially in life of their participation in the comprehensive development process of the GCC countries and their role in boosting the economy. The President of the Chamber met with the Director General of the ILO to discuss mechanisms for dealing with the current challenges in the fields of labor and laborers. The first Arab International Cyber Security Conference and Exhibition continues in its second day under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. More in this report. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the first Arab International Cyber Security Conference and Exhibition opened yesterday and continues today in its second day. The three-day event is held at the Exhibition World Bahrain in Asghir under the slogan Empowering Global Cyber Security Cooperation, providing a platform to exchange expertise and supporting cooperation. As you know, the trending is the cyber security nowadays and benefit are very keen to be one of the top uh, company uh, that 
The most important thing for us is the security because, as you know, we are a financial electronic service provider. The event highlights global initiatives and the latest trends in the field of cybersecurity, in addition to discussing main cybersecurity challenges and developments while providing perfect solutions and studying best practices. Yeah, we are really excited to be here in our uh, security conference. This is, it seems like a very prestigious conference and we see a lot of delegates from internationally. Risk Associates is a, a local company, but the parents are from Australia and uh, me being uh, traveling from Australia and go around the globe uh, to offer these services. We offer penetration testing, vulnerability assessments, PCI, DSS, and basically the range of services which a cybersecurity company should have. And um, Alhamdulillah, I think I must say that we are on the frontiers um, uh, from that perspective and have an offices uh, to support Bahrain, not only in Australia, but UK, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Canada, and other regions in the Middle East. It is uh, extremely important to be here at uh, Bahrain and I'm really proud to be here at the Cybersecurity Summit for the uh, Arab uh, region or the Gulf region and um, it's good to have all the stakeholders here, all the other uh, government um, uh, relationships but also our clients to, uh, to work together to, uh, to uh, get it to the next uh, level. The event serves as a global platform for all experts and specialists in the field of cybersecurity and for all representatives of government and private sectors and all participating companies. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef.